Welcome back to the North American Academy League. For those of you just tuning in, CLG Academy's neighborhood lost power during their game against Team Liquid. And the game will be rescheduled later in the day. Yes, today, following Golden Guardians Academy versus Echo Fox Academy. But our next game is just around the bend, and it features TSM Academy against 100 Thieves. And after eight games of play, TSM Academy find themselves at the bottom of the standings with only dose wins. Yeah, TSM Academy has not looked very good thus far, and there's not necessarily that much hope that the situation will get better. Yeah. The hope for TSM is that the rest of the league is still pretty open, and with a few wins, they could hope to catch that kind of final yeah. playoff spot. And one of the teams competing with them for a lower playoff spot seed is 100 Thieves, who will be starting with Levi and Brandini in lineup after their brief stint at Rift Rivals. Not an unexpected move uh, now that Onda is back on the LCS roster, but they experienced hopefully some uh, good play on that next level in the international play. Yep. And despite not looking great against some of Europe's best talent, uh, the, based off yesterday's game, 100 Thieves are looking at the rest of 8.13's meta for some inspiration. Yeah. And with Levi checking out the Gragas buffs and Lin Sanity looking pretty good on that Talon mid with Smite. Yep, they are getting the variety in quick. And we'll see if those flex picks during champ select in just a few moments. But first, let's hit the starting lineups. On the blue side, it is TSM Academy. That means in the top lane, it's Pie Cake Lord with Mike Young in the jungle, a Blaze Olive at mid, Mr. Raleigh's in the bot lane, and support Shady with Coach Hermes. And on the red side, it's 100 Thieves Academy. In the top lane, it's Brandini, Levi in the jungle, Linsanity in the mid lane, bot lane, Rakara supported by Stunt with Coach Joseph Jang. Determined faces there. And Stunt's like, I'm ready to play. He always has a happy one on his face. Reminds me of the turtle smile. 100 Thieves definitely wanting to find a little bit more ground there. Like you said, with Levi and Brandini coming back, maybe be able to put a little bit more kind of pressure on their shoulders since they maybe feel ready to carry. Yeah, I hope so. And as much as people kind of meme them for not looking that great, no North American top laners really looked great and without really any True. time to practice and synergize with their team, playing against the best teams in Europe for the most part, it's not really a surprise that they struggled. Yeah. Uh, and Levi in particular, despite the team uh, picking up only two wins, or one win actually, I believe, over Splice, uh, they still, for the most part, did did their job. Uh, you know, Levi got really big one game on a Funnel Graves game. Brandini got kind of screwed over against Aatrox a couple times. But other than that, uh, you know, I think they did what you would expect given the position they were put in. Absolutely. Now in Champion Select, 2 and 6, TSM Academy versus the 4 and 4, 100 Thieves. There's the Nocturne. Lulu actually coming from the blue side of TSM, along with that Zoe. Yeah, Lulu makes some sense for the Insanity. Combos well with a lot of the carry orange stuff that Levi likes to play. Pretty safe laner. Aatrox banned. Red side staple now. Oh, the Zoe yeah. banned out by TSM, so that kind of gives 100 Thieves another target ban here if they want it. Let's see what they go for. To get rid of the Talia as well. I'm surprised people ban the Talia versus Levi. It just doesn't scream Levi champion to me. It's fast paced, it can jungle quickly, and it has a fair amount of like playmaking, but it still is just like not what I associate right. with Levi at all. Until we see him that one time and he's like, did he just turn Talia into assassin? What is yeah. this? <laughs> what? Pike Lord grabbing up Morgana. Pretty solid pick we've also seen going on to the ban list frequently. Looks like Shady will be taking that one into his hands as Brandini grabs up the Vlad. Yep, and we see the Rakan ban as well. No surprise. Yeah. Uh, it's definitely risen in priority. Shut down the supports. The Morgan is interesting. Uh, a lot of the times people play it, you have a bit of a threat that it will go into the carry position in the bot lane versus the support position. Not really the case with Mr. Rales. Pretty much has been a marksman player and will yep. continue to be a marksman player. Last, or actually two, they're still sitting on that Swain pick right now on Mike Young's screen. Wasting all the time, it's just a using the time, really running the clock down here to make sure they have what they want and it's according to what they're seeing that Kindred gets left up, mm. which we have not seen a lot of today at all. No, I haven't seen. Say not seen at all today. Yeah, haven't seen it very much at all, even since Dardock played it twice at Rift yeah. Rivals, once or twice, and had pretty good effect on it. So I'm excited to see what it can do down with Mike Young playing it. And uh, oh, yeah. the return of Talon this time. Lock it in. For Linsanity again. Had pretty good effect last time. Going to do it again. Most likely with Smite. 100 Thieves with the 
rotation of Vladimir and Shen in their first phase is a very common uh, kind of kill lane, bot lane. Shen has that taunt set up, has good damage early on, and allows the Vladimir, who can sometimes struggle with ranges, to get close enough to go on to whoever TSM has down there. Though the Morgana, if it is in the support position, is pretty good against that. Hard for them to break that shield yeah. and land CC. Haven't seen Talon too much recently. We're just about anywhere. I feel like high playing that back in the day. And a few more once Talon got his kind of parkour ability. I think we saw it a few times, but not too much. Yeah, I mean, uh, Froggen played a game of it. A couple people played right. games of it. Um, I think PoE had one last split. Maybe there's a split. But either way, the Talon pick is a uh, terror in solo queue. It's actually one of the best oh, yeah. uh, mid laners right now, for sure. Very annoying to play against. See there. the Fiddle now and Bry's bands. And there's a Ken and Gragas. Ken wow. and Gragas. I like the Gragas band a lot. Uh, it can be a really big blocker against the Kindred pick who drops his zone. Everyone's sitting it. We'll all be safe. Guess what? Gragas just drops in the middle. It only protects the enemy team now. So. Uh, definitely a good ban whenever you play Kindred. Do not let them get any sort of dis like group displacement right. abilities. It looks like they'll keep him in that Kindred ultimate. Well, Gragas works well with, or excuse me, Galio works well with it for the same reason. Right. You drop the Kindred ult, you drop the Galio ult on top of it, hopefully it knocks everyone back as that Kindred ult ends. Ooh, a lot of Poland absorbing or kind of yanking the team in here from TSM Academy. It is going to be hard to get away from an initiation if they connect. 17 seconds here for 100 Thieves as they hover the Monkey King. What are we looking at? Let's see if it actually is. Uh, there has been some bot lane Wukongs I've been watching in solo queue. It's powerful. It Ooh. can work, but I don't think that's necessarily what you hope for. And it's going to be a Nard Interesting. Off. Back up with Brandini, not so much. That's one of his big champions. True. Uh, and worth noting that Mr. Rollins will not be on a marksman, despite what I was saying earlier. He will be playing that Swain down with the Morgana. And we're going to have two mages down the bot lane. So that'll be a fun matchup to watch, as well as this Kindred and Talon who can influence the map more early on. Every time I, I still like, kind of think of Raleigh, you, it's a protected Kog'Maw. Yeah, exactly. It's something to sit on that back line and really pressure. So this will be awesome to see. Both teams foregoing that marksman. So this is going to be an interesting matchup with quite, actually, you have one marksman with Kindred and uh, a Gnar marksman as well. So eight out of 10 melees here, basically. I guess you got more guys. Yeah, and I would say it's a bit of a stretch to call both Kindred and Gnar marksman. Gnar, half the time, is in melee form, especially in team fights. Yeah, you want to be true. that melee form. Uh, Kindred, a little closer to a marksman, you know, definitely has that range that you try and play with the auto attacks a lot more often. So it's going to be great. Yeah, it's going to be a face fun game. The face is definitely going to happen throughout the game as the, the teams get ready to hit the rift. We'll have to see if TSM can kind of bolster that score line and try to get something they can work with towards the end of the split. We talk about that last playoff position, and that is a name you usually see in a playoff spot. And this is a, a interesting comp that I think has a lot going on that I'm excited to see. You have the Kindred, of course, and then you have the Swain and the Galio to bring AoE on top of that area. So if a lot of the enemy team is sitting in your ultimate trying to get that brief heal back up, as soon as it's done, Swain drops his ultimate and instantly obliterates everyone who was kind of sitting on those low HP values, most likely. Similarly, the Gra uh, Galio can come in over the top and CC people right. as it's ending. And so they have some combo tools set up to make for a very dangerous Kindred situation. Uh, Darius as well, being able to use those low HP values to reset with his ultimate. Uh, they gave themselves a comp that isn't like a hard synergy, like these things super interact yeah. well. Uh, it's more of a soft one where a lot of these can have a big influence with the Kindred Ultimate. But looking at how many six uh, kind of big ultimates there are with these compositions, they it's interesting that they become utility. You have a Stand United, a Heroic Entrance, the Respite from Kindred. It's kind of like there's not a lot of damage to be had at six. So it's interesting to see who makes those impactful plays when you actually get a Hemo play again there or you're nailing somebody with a Gragas Ultimate. Yeah, definitely. Uh, uh, Vladimir will be the one to watch down the bot lane against the Swain, I think will be pretty explosive. Yeah. Top lane, Darius versus Gnar. A lot of the Gnar matchups versus melee champions is like, well, I hope they don't get onto me because if they do, it can be not very fun. And that was the kind of the old matchups versus the Aurelias and the Camilles who have those gap closers relatively yeah. early on. Darius doesn't have that at all really working for him. But if you get an apprehend, it can sometimes work out. Absolutely. So again, Brandini, Levi back on the, the, uh, the Academy team. We'll have to see what they've kind of brought in or say maybe they have a little bit more confidence to be a caller on the team, a little bit more from them coming in with that confidence from Rift Rivals. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure it, you know, it might have been arguably better to spend the whole week off 
scrimming with your actual academy yeah. team, but uh, I'm sure there's some invaluable experience playing against the likes of Wonder. You know, really probably teach some lessons to Brandini. Yeah, <laughs> definitely going to have picked up a thing or two, I'd hope. For sure. Absorbing that pressure as well, knowing that you kind of are at a level, but learning and saying this was kind of expected to happen, I can grow from this is one of the biggest things that you kind of need to come out as a non-veteran player as the pros in a situation of international play. Yeah, and I think a lot of people kind of had Brandini's back when it was like, all right, well, they ran this funnel comp where he doesn't get any help. They picked the rumble into Aatrox with the Nocturne as well. Like, there's no way you're living at six. They both have a revive passive and a hard dive against you. Like, what are you really supposed to do? So I, I don't think people looked at that tournament too negatively for Brandini. Uh, I'm sure the fans enjoyed memeing him a little bit, but uh, <laughs> I, I don't think it's something that would be too much of a condemnation. Absolutely. And big props to the team and everybody for hanging with us during the slight delay there. And thank you to TSM and 100 Thieves for kind of suiting up with the game previously being knocked out due to the power here in Los Angeles. So TSM and 100 Thieves now underway. We will get that CLG versus TL game later in the day. See what they have here for the beginning and line of scrimmage. Things are set up nice and safe. I don't think anybody will activate too early seeing the compositions here. Yeah, we'll have to watch the smite mid by Linsanity as well. I've been watching a lot of Shifter stream. He's been playing that on basically everything. Uh, and the way the that it gets its swollen. benefits, which we kind of covered at the top yeah. of the day, you can go get Jungle Camp level 2 potentially right at the start of the laning phase. Uh, if you want to, you get that level 2 much earlier. So it looks like he's hovering near those wolves, maybe he'll go for them. Uh, you also can contest scuttle crabs and the enemy raptors very often. Uh, when you engage in melee or in uh, jungle camps, you get the mana regen that comes with it, so it can act as a bit of sustain, as you see his bot lane actually leashing for him to get that jungle XP. And then you take the challenging smite. A lot of the jungle items are actually pretty gold efficient, and so you are able to power spike pretty quickly with that smite. He didn't kill the small ones first. <laughs> Shenanigans. <laughs> Shenanigans, man. What is this malarkey? Him uh, rotating top. Linsanity is just saying, I'm still here. I don't want to take any damage, but I'll also try to fake you out a little bit. Back and forth as Levi takes his Raptors. He should stay pretty healthy in this effect. Mike Young is on the bottom side of the map, taking his red buff. As we get a first taunt in here, level one to start things off as they're working within and around the minion wave. I'd say TSM come out pretty good on that. That's what I was saying. This bot lane's probably going to be a lot of fun to watch. A lot of interaction in the laning phase. Uh, it does feel like eventually TSM's bot lane should win with that Morgana being able to put down the Tormented Soil and get that push advantage because Shen really is going to struggle with that. But if he can land taunts without Morgana getting the shield off, the black shield to stop it, yep. they are a lot of good trades available for 100 Thieves bot lane. Also could play the, the no-look taunt. You start heading for one person and then you hit Shady up when he uses it. Brandini under his turret. A quick apprehend. He hops away with a skip and a jump. And they're doing pretty good on the top side. 11 to 16. And he's got those minions to clear up under the turret. A little pressure from the top side, but also mid onto a Blaze Olive. Permafrost locks him down. That's an early dive. They flash in. He gets the knock up, but Levi has turret aggro and it works out great. I would say great for 100 Thieves, but better than expected. Yeah, they were able to get out. Uh, did get the flash trade. So Linsanity lost his, Levi lost his, Blaze Olive lost his. So not the best. And it, I saw what they were going for. It looked like they might have been able to follow, but not quite the case. And now Brandini is alone on the top side. Very early hit. The teleport actually coming in from Bot. That would be from Stun. And he's going to stop his right away. Still has the taunt, and they go on to Shady. Huge damage with the Ignite coming up in the follow-up flash hit. Coming in from Stun for First Blood. Action in all three lanes prompted yeah. by that initial dive in the mid lane. 100 Thieves. Oh boy. Uh, a very crazy dive. Shows that the jungler is not going to be able to stop the dive in the top side. So then TSM try and make that play. The teleport comes in to dissuade that dive, which baits TSM's bot lane for getting aggressive when they're only level twos. Yeah. Oh, it was he body block. It. So he canceled the TP, and now because he's level two and they know they can actually go in on him, they get that as a really nice kind of bait. <laughs> Just saying, oh yeah, look at me, I'm TPing here to dissuade that dive. Yeah. And then Shady and Mr. Gorales don't have their level three abilities yet and get killed for it. I love Rikara taking a bullet for his teammate there with the Dark Binding too. That was great. Also awesome 
on the day we're talking about weird teleport cancellations to see so many happen. Yeah, it's a perfect point. Meteos once again there. They wouldn't have got that kill. <laughs> As the TP would have came through. It's so funny to see. We'll just keep teleports with the ability to stop them. It seems to be working out. Five minutes coming up on the clock. A little bit slower than our previous games today, but still a lot of action from lane to lane. Just one kill being secured. Rikara and Stunt on the bot side feeling pretty good about their engaged. We'll now match up once again against Raleigh's and Shady. Those supports have, or I'm sorry, the marksman positions have their summoners up. Bot lane carries. Like bot this. lane carries. Great. Good one. Vision of Empire comes down as they pull Spirit's Refuge over. Just being nice and safe. I guess just his sword. Wasn't necessarily W. Yeah, and both mages have some sustain built into their kit, so the poke That's not true. always stick. That's so annoying for Morgana. It's very unexpected. It's a good thing it doesn't just fill her up immediately. Oop, never move. Quickly hitting stun, but being a tank himself, not going to take too much. That kind of just sidestepped TSM out of position is Levi's going to be able to smite it anyways. And with this double smite composition, you think they should have good scuttle crab control, which, as we see, some aggression in the mid lane. Level six early for Linsanity as a semi jungler. Uh, but I was going to say, it should be a good strategy versus Kindred in particular, who relies somewhat on farming enemy camps and things like that to get his uh, bounties off and power up his auto attack range. He actually got one of the scuttle crabs early on as we see some aggression down the bot side. Good blocks coming in from Spirit's Refuge. I think they just got vision. Yeah, pings go down onto Mike Young, so they have an idea of where he is. This is great information for Levi, hovering topside with Lin Sanity, kind of reflecting that position as well. Nice sidestep by Stunt there, made sure the binding didn't land and didn't set that gank up. Uh, but to the point I was making earlier, they lost the Scuttle Crab up on the top side when both spawned at the same time, and uh, Mike Young was actually able to get a bounty off of that. But from here on out, it's probably going to have to be kills only as yeah. either one of them can go for these marks to deny them from uh, Mike Young when it's on one of their own jungle kids. So sad to see that Grom get hit up early as well. <laughs> You're like, no, please no. Damage onto Akara and 20% of his HP to throw down the sink. Cool. He'll be pretty healthy there as he gets stunned in just a few moments. Back on the bot side. Blue is taken by Levi as the Arctic assaults over the wall. A dive from Blaze Olive gets the taunt in with a fast W as Linsanity's looking for Mike Young, the squishiest. As the heroic entrance comes in, it's more of an exit as TSM get themselves to safety. Whoa. But still, Levi getting that blue buff. The teleport comes in, is stopped up again from stun. Second time he's baited that one. <laughs> Not yeah. much happening that time as both teams back out of that blue buff invade. And Levi was able to secure it for himself. So unlucky for both the Blaze Olive and Mike Young. Ooh. Losing just a few minions in the mid lane, but not too bad. 73 to 50, or 73 to 58, however, for Lin Sanity. Yeah, Lin Sanity's been absolutely dominating those chickens that should belong to Mike Young. And as a result, Mike Young's level four to Levi's six, and Lin Sanity's eight. Uh, so really kind of disgusting stuff here as he finally hits five. And this is another strategy that on 814 will be getting uh, nerfed right. by the changes where the highest level champion in the game holding a smite jungle item uh, will receive less from lane creeps. That'll basically put a kibosh to this strategy as well as the funneling. Back to Scuttle. Easy. Scryos Bloom's going to take this one out. It might be an activation, though. Push from Raleigh's and Mike Young towards the bot side. It looks like they might just go for a fight here. Mike Young's coming up on level six. You can see he's 90%. So if he hugs a minion wave for a short amount of time, he may be able to throw down Lamb's Respite for an engage. Unfortunately, that brush is warded, so he can't get any closer. And the wave with that Morgana is constantly kind of pushed on 100 Thief's side as they do get aggressive. Oh, stun may feel like he went a little too far in. Levi's on the other side, however. Oh, what a flash from Raleigh's. It would have hit the Black Shield in the first place, but the follow-up damage could have been there. Lin Sanity doesn't have really a position to parkour over the wall and get himself out, and 100 Thieves activating in the bot lane. Might give TSM time to play around the map. Yeah, that was a really good timing for 100 Thieves because Ablaze Olive's ultimate is still on cooldown from that skirmish in the top river. And that would have made it basically impossible for him to collapse. He could have tried to TP in, but once that Sejuani ult went wide and didn't stun anybody up, Linsanity was still too far away from the play to find an angle. And TSM get out of a pretty sticky situation. 
There's more Raptors. You can see 96 to 79 now as he instantly just goes back. Smite's already charging up. Raptors are already up on the bot side. If he clears this and goes right down, it looks like he'll leave this one up. They don't have enough vision for it now. But I'd say as Mike Young, as a jungler, you take your Raptors down so they can spawn. As soon as they're up, you go back to your Raptors so they can spawn. It's been interesting to see him head towards that top side. Yeah, it just kind of assumes at this point that they're going to get taken. <laughs> it's they're dead. not there. Yeah, they're never there. Instead, <laughs> Levi and Linsanity actually both recall. Or actually, uh, Levi stayed on the map for a little bit longer. Linsanity recalled, wanted to buy some more items. He's got a good chunk of gold. Mike Young finally hit six. Brandini kind of needs to go back and spend at this point a thousand in his pocket, but hasn't been really contested for any of his engage or in the heaviest laning phase, I should say. Quick rotation. Raleigh's and Shady back off that last engage you just saw, and it looks like they'll be able to get down Rift Herald. TSM setting a few things up, saying the laning phase is not going in our favor. But Mike Young has been able to kind of route around Levi, figure out ways to be in and out, and that'll be for Rift Herald this time. Instead, Brandini going top. Ooh, Permafrost is now gonna lock down Pyacake Lord as he tries to deny a bit of vision in the brush. It's not gonna be enough. The heal comes through, but that Permafrost able to quickly stack up would have taken him down. Mike Young finding himself in a bad spot. Lambs are spite to go down and save himself. No, it does not. And now it's gonna be a Blaze Olive in the frying pan. A 4v1 situation away from turret aggro is perfect for 100 Thieves. Surprising situation there by TSM Academy. Did not look well played at all on their side. Like you said, away from turret, no lambs respite. Felt like they should have enough defensive tools to try and bait them underneath that turret. Not the case, unfortunately. We'll have to take another look at that one. And uh, a good 3 for 0 up in the top side for 100 Thieves as their bot lane just keeps on farming away. Stunt having the ultimate to join in there. And first turret, the game drops as well. So a nice start off by Brandini. High Cake Lord flashes early, but he's going to get stunned up no matter what. The heal that comes in from his Q kind of makes Levi panic and whip his ultimate out. As yeah. He ends up dying anyways. But as you see, they're not going to need it. Mike Young can make his way under the turret. Instead, flashes down and away from the turret and then goes down without ulting. Looked like he had enough mana to go for it and just assumed he was dead and there was nothing he could do. But you got to think that if they were underneath that turret with the Lamb's Respite, yeah. maybe they could make some stuff happen there. I was going to say, like, my old talent thought came in where Cutthroat kind of shut you up for a second. But no, no not, the case. not the case. 12 to 17, Rift Herald is quickly used bot as Shelly goes down valiantly, breaking the second turret overall of the game. Top and bottom have dropped in favor of both teams. Probably get a little bit of mid love now as the bot lane carries start to rotate around. Good Ocean Drake to keep TSM topped off on the map as they have started to grab a bit of momentum. Still down in gold as 100 Thieves control the game. Yeah, and I really like what we've seen out of 100 Thieves this game. Pretty cohesive strategy to shut down Mike Young early on. Yeah. Uh, pretty even bot lane, a good counter pick up in the top side, so they have a ton of pressure everywhere but bot lane, and that's totally acceptable because if a draft, if the enemy team drafts well at all, you should not have pressure in all three lanes and a winning jungle matchup. Yeah. So, uh, very understandable for 100 Thieves, and they're doing a great job executing on this comp. Linsanity is pretty big now, having completed this first item and still having his Tiamat done as well. And interesting to see also Levi going for the damage Sejuani build. Yeah. I don't know if he... Uh, I will fight you. <laughs> not, I mean, it's Levi, right? Yeah, and I'm surprised. I mean, they do have a Shen and a Gnar, but I got to say, I'm expecting more often than not to have the... Uh, Cinder Hulk as opposed to the Runic Echoes. That is true. Looks like Brandini will give some assistance with a Hyper over. Mike Young is going to be seen on this invade. He wants that camp. And he's going to get a, a camp of his own from Levi. Oh, my word. He, he checks it with Wolf. They blow the Blast Cone, so that could also be their escape on this one. Levi is going to start heading down. These guys flashes are there. Mike Young can jump over, so Blast Cone wasn't as bad, but it kind of caused Shady as Flash. Uh, a little greedy on the side of 100 Thieves, <laughs> prioritizing a maybe large team fight or skirmish down there as opposed to just denying yeah. the, the bounty. So I like I like that better, right? You go for a skirmish then. Yeah, I, I think it would have been better just to deny the bounty because now Mike Young is slowly finding his way back into the game. He's still pretty far away. Uh, but, you know, you take what you can get. Yep. 
And they did get the flash out of Shady, so still some good Ooh. stuff for 100 Thieves down there. Pushing through pretty confidently. Three quick wards placed on the bot side of the map, but it looks like they'll be able to put a lot of pressure on this bot turret. Stun routing through a little early will yeah. allow the team to know they need to bring pressure up. So Stun could have really stopped this from happening as quickly as it could. It looks like TSM will start to contest. Yeah, one of those plays that you're just actually too fast on. You're going through the whole jungle. Yeah. The minion wave's not quite there. The enemy team has enough time to read that coming then when Sanity was camping in the jungle and Galio could clear out his wave and come back down. So it's just small the, whoopsie. The, yeah, the timing is not quite working out on that potential bot dive. So 15 minutes, a 5,000 gold lead. I was like, 500? No, that's 5,000 in 15 minutes for 100 Thieves. Man, they have really tacked on the pressure and already looking to come over the wall. Lin Sanity, 40 CS up in that mid lane, which is starting to amount to levels already level 11, and that's going to help put down the damage with Levi picking up the kill onto a blaze out. Um, baby, they blow up the Galio instantly, and you get to see a little bit of the combo that comes in from yeah. Sejuani and the talent able to stack up that passive very quickly. They get the chain stun from the R and the E together, as well as I think Shen got a taunt in there. So no chance for a Blaze all to do anything. He's one just... of the guys that's supposed to live the longest. Yeah. Not so much with that much pressure. And this opens up the jungle as well. Shady throwing in a few abilities just to deter 100 Thieves, but a lot of confidence. They had all those wards placed in the bot. Now they're inserting wards onto the top side, and 100 Thieves will be privy to everything TSM is trying to get coming out of base. Doesn't look like they want to quite go yet. Putting some pressure down onto the people who are hanging out in the top side yeah. jungle, but nothing doing. And that's kind of one of those things that happens when they put so much pressure down that bot jungle, they posture this bot dive, doesn't happen. Maybe TSM kind of relaxes a little bit after they don't get dove in the bot lane. And Ablaze Olive is just a little far away from his turret clearing that wave, which allowed that to happen. Ooh, that's a nice ward for a dive if they can clear this in time. And that signals, watch out bot lane, there yeah. might be a Gnar coming very shortly. They're pinging it like anybody, anybody with the ability to clear. This would be fantastic. They throw it on a pink so they can save the sweeper for anything happening in lane. And then Sanity all over every camp. Levi's like, sure, man, farm your face off. He's going to be able to get some abilities out and throw down the blades even more with that blue buff cooldown. As we see a few more core items coming in. Rikara finishing up his boots as he actually predators out of base. He's here I come. Hasn't been doing it for much else. For the most part, Rikar has been on an island while action happens <laughs> elsewhere on the map. He's just happy to be farming away. Yeah. One, they're, they're even. 153 on that bot lane. Not too bad. His CS in the top is just about even with that 150 mark. It's really just the mid lane. This expecting the smite talent, the smite echo, to really be getting a CS lead and keeping it true to the pick. He is doing so. Now 50 CS up. Yeah, most importantly, more than the, the lead over the Galios, the lead over the Kindred. 88 CS to 114 of Levi. Yeah, also then, huge. Like you said, a lot of that farm that Linsanity has as an advantage over Blaze Olive is coming from Mike Young's jungle. Yeah, it's a great point because Linsanity's taking Levi's. Shady getting a good bit of damage. Hemo Plague is on. He's going to deny that damage with a stopwatch. Nicely done. Saves his life. But now he is a target going in. That's huge for a Black Shield and Soul Shackle initiation. Ah, sweeping him back. Not into the wall, but enough. Way enough crowd control for Lin Sanity to come in and cut down Pie Cake Lord. Have a slice. Yeah, stunt TPing in there just for fun. Ends up joining in the top side. Even Rakara down there on the bot side. And you see how much damage this Talon packs. Why he is such a menace for I, solo queue. I love it, too. He's like delivering situations. He's like, oh, top? Cool. OK, you guys take that down. Now I'm going to head somewhere else. I got something else to kill. He is just out of that play instantly. And the team is kind of coming up behind him to finish what's happening. 100 Thieves are a few steps ahead on every play. Yeah, and with that gold fleet getting close to 9,000, feels like it's going to be a pretty tough ask for TSM to come back in this game. 2,800 gold above his lane opponent. Absolutely ridiculous. At 2-0-2, a lot that built up in CS, but obviously the kills helping out quite a bit. Dragon now also going over to 100 Thieves. The Ocean Drake will allow them to just stay out on the map and be even more of a nuisance here to TSM Academy. And Rikara did force that 
stopwatch like you're saying. Not bad for a kind of 1v2 situation where he was able yep. to just kind of run down the Morgana. Definitely denies TSM's playmaking. Levi, sacrilege, what are you doing? Hey man, let him have his own camp. <laughs> oh, not, I thought he was gonna leave one for Lin Sanity. He's not even gonna get the red buff, dude. <laughs> I mean, hey, a lot of the time, people have looked to Levi to be the guy to get all the resources and hard carry. Yeah. This is a good look to see, you know, them putting those resources somewhere else for a change. And Lin That's a good point to have that confidence. Yeah, Lin Sanity is a guy who a lot of people have been uh you know, expecting more out of, feel like he's not had the impact on the games that he should, and this time having a, a best game by far of, of uh, his summer split, and it's with Levi actually being the one taking the back foot a little bit. I love seeing players just kind of enjoy that what would be variety pick coming out. We've seen a bit of the talent around and now, and Lin Sandy's hands feels very comfortable on it to put on a show and also make some of the impact plays. Giving himself a little bit of hero building here in the game with this smite talent and such a CS lead. 30 away from the event horizon on his mid lane. And against the Galio, that may be very possible if this game continues to go a little longer. Only 20 minutes in means Baron has just spawned on the map. And 100 Thieves say, we're powerful enough to just take these turrets straight up. Yeah, this is the point where they keep pushing and eventually they're going to take their bot lane out of there because that Baron's up, like you said. And it feels pretty easy for 100 Thieves to bait it from here on with their lead. Yeah. The mobility that they have to chase people down. Talon being able to hop all over these walls whenever you're baiting a Baron makes him pretty good actually in the mid to late game portions if he's ahead. Can, can play pretty fearlessly and he has the Shenult to go on top of him as well to make sure that he can play a little bit more aggressive than typically allowed to. Yeah, and everything's happening so early there. Kind of throwing in these mini 1v1s, or I'm sorry, 1-3-1s everywhere. Brandini pushes top, actually needs a few people to go over and recuperate that duty. Or I should say take care of that duty so they can recoup the wave. Oh my word, Shady getting out of the zone where he would die to Lin Sanity's ultimate, but you can see how fast they could be removed from the map right now with his lead. That's a level 15 to a level 9. Yikes. Uh... <laughs> yeah, very lucky for Shady that he didn't get the uh, passive proc off yeah. there. Would have absolutely ticked him down. Instead, just gonna eat the flash. <laughs> they say you want the fight, we'll take the fight to you. Stunned up and up the lambs, the fight cannot even come down. It was not the first time that's happened to Mike Young. These fights are happening so fast, but is it too fast for 100 Thieves to even get their hands in the pie once again? A one-for-one -one trade as Linsanity falls for the first time. As much as that was a bit of a question mark ping, initially looking for Mike Young, he did bait the fight and give them the shutdown onto Linsanity, who was super, super strong. And as uh, we've talked a little bit before on the LCS analyst desk about how, as Vakara once again hopping on to Shady. I get this kill. Oh, he's gonna. Yeah. Oh man, that has to feel so bad for Raleigh's just watching Rikara dance around you and take down your teammate. Yeah, maybe a little bit unnecessary in the flash. It's <laughs> kill either way, and Rikara is just trying to be like, guys, look, I'm really good at Vladimir for the second time in a row. As That's everyone is, we're all talking about Linsanity and these, this talent. He's like, guys, I've been playing a really good Vladimir. Please pay attention. <laughs> So I think we can figure it out now. Pycake Lord going down. And wait a minute, a 2v1. Mike Young throws down Lambs for Spite. Coming in with the clock tower, possibly drilling him down. It will not be the throw from Brandini as the kill comes in for Mike Young. It's all been a ruse. 100 Thieves is topside taking down Baron. Yeah, but they don't have Linsanity dealing damage to it quite yet. Slowly so. taking down Baron. <laughs> yeah, very slowly. And Linsanity is baiting, so not sure they're going to be able to find anything after this. And I think they just kind of put themselves in a position where they can't take it anymore. If they had him, it'd be down. And they've played themselves into pushing mid lane again. Mm, unlucky for them. <laughs> unlucky. Uh, unlucky, yeah. TSM continuing this I will die to bait you strategy. Starts out with Mike Young in the top side, and 100 Thieves are kind of hesitant to go for it because they're like, is he really just running at us? And they chain CC him down to death, but this does set up a monstrous combo for a Blaze Olive who's able to get the three-man taunts, the punches, the winds of war. And a nice binding by Shady locks down Linsanity for that kill. And those extra shutdown bonuses coming into effect there. A nice 600 gold. And the same thing happening down for Pie Cake Lord. They're baiting Brandini. He's way ahead of the play. Mike Young's nowhere close. Mike Young doesn't ult him right away, surprisingly. 
uh, and he dies as a result, and then eventually Brandini's gonna die, and that will also give us 600 gold shutdown. Absolutely ridiculous, the amount Brandini uh, damage he did to Pycake Lord. Now, Pycake Lord receiving it once again, spell immune to the Hemoplate coming down, so he should stay alive. Mike Yun takes a hit from Rakar as he flashes forward, and now it's Linsanity into the fight. A Blaze Olive just missing on the crowd control as Linsanity is out with his ultimate, and just a back and forth as a few members limp away, mostly from 100 Thieves. Yeah, 100 Thieves not playing these situations super cleanly, and it's it's still a 10k gold lead, so in no way am I about to say that they're going to lose this game, but right. this is not the clean closeout you would expect from the monstrous advantages they had built themselves in the first 20 minutes of this game. Getting a little chaotic, I believe, with excitement would be kind of the right way to categorize it. They're not being too sloppy. It seems like they're getting ahead of themselves, but no, there is a pullback moment, and they're hitting that as well to keep that lead. Now on to Mountain Drake, their second of the game to see them be able to take down these turrets even faster. Brandini is just huge with his build light now at 3, 1, and 1 in a 40 CS lead, 43 CS lead over Pikey. Lord. And I like the decision to go with the uh, Blade of the Rune King. They're very much in a, we want to split you up and allow Blin Sanity's talent to run around the map and find kills in side lanes. They want Rakara in the top, Brandini in the bot lane, Blin Sanity roaming around that mid, so yeah, build that play of the Rune King. It's better for that game plan. You don't really want to fight straight 5v5. Whoa, Mike Young almost going down, now forcing the Lambs respite out in defense. Not once has TSM been able to put one of these on their own terms. Levi now pushing out of the base. Zanya's in hand with a haunting guy so he can make even more plays if TSM think they're gonna be able to take someone down. They may be wrong. Ricaro with the flank as the team heads in mid and you still have Brandini bot. This is getting tough. Yeah, there's that 1-3-1. One, one. Ricaro pushed in the top wave, started lurking behind them to see if there's anyone not where they should be trying to find a pick off and now they can collapse back onto this Baron, and this time, maybe look to finish, because they did force many members of TSM back into base. Vision of Empire will give them an idea of what's going on, but it has to be placed correctly, and they may miss something along the way. Teleport will come in as Brandini's there. No Meganar to be used, so they may want to just go after the fight immediately and charge him up. It's Raleigh throwing down the ultimate. R2 will come out soon, but he hasn't taken quite a bit to deliver it back with the Souls. Levi almost going down as Raleigh fires off the R2 and Brandini and the rest of the team are heading towards the top side, playing it safe, but still looking for an engage just as much as TSM. Oof, that was a complete mix up of ideas on 100 Thieves side. They start sneaking the Baron as, hold on, oh. we'll wait till Brandini decides <laughs> not to go for yeah. that play. Uh, but what, what a complete mismatch of what they're trying to do. You have the Vladimir sitting away from the Baron while your team tries to burn it down and have a TP come in on top of the Baron. If that's your plan, the Vladimir should be DPSing the Baron down too because you're clearly in a rush situation. You're not set up to turn. As a result, when TSM then try and collapse yep. on it because they've, they, they're have they not in a position to turn, they're not doing the Baron fast enough, they actually don't get anything back for themselves. And when Sanity, who with the extra mobility that Talon has compared to the rest of his team, ends up way ahead of them and ends up dying for the second time in a row. He's actually almost level 18, the only one in the game that's currently 17, as he's had such a huge game, has to start making the perfect plays. Stunt, stopping a Blaze Olive from getting in. Lin Sanity just on the other side as well to hop over, and it looks like they'll be able to secure this one with Winds of War just short. Mike Young gets taunted, and they cannot make their way to the Baron. A Blaze Olive locking down three on the backside of the pit as Shady gets the Lambs respite to help him, but he does go down as Mike Young knew what he was doing. Raleigh's chased out of the fight as Pie Cake Lord goes down in the first death of the fight. So scattered, I'm sorry, second of the fight. So scattered are these fights as a Blaze Olive cannot make it all the way out. And Baron is taken. This time, finally, 100 Thieves convert on their Baron play. A little risky once again as Levi was forced away from the pit, but fear not because Linsanity is a level 17 jungler and was able to <laughs> smite it for himself. They secure the Baron buff, and then at that point, TSM was not able to collapse all at the same I time. I can smite anything. You can smite better. Absolutely. The advantage of that lane CS that he gets as well. And uh, they were able to get the uh, turn on the TSM, who were pretty split up when they were contesting. 100 Thieves now turning the base of TSM into shambles. No minions on the bottom side in their favor. 
which may need to be cleaned up here so there's no possible comeback for TSM. A possible is a very big possible. I should say small possible, if you will, with a big gold lead in favor of 100 Thieves. Yeah, and so here you see a Blaze Olive. Darius had been running down to the bot side, did not think they would instantly re reset onto the Baron, so Blaze Olive is very far ahead of the rest of his team. Uh, and is trying to zone away Levi, but then everyone else kind of kites up to the top side where they get jumped on by Linsanity, forces the ultimate out very quickly, and now a Blaze Olive still caught off on the other side of the pit. Good follow-up by Brandini. They continue to split them up as Linsanity chased Mr. Rollins away. They eventually finish off Pie Cake Lord. They get the flash out of Mike Young. A Blaze Olive tries to recall out, but there's that crazy mobility I was talking about when you're setting up these kind of Baron plays. Oh. Linsanity chases him down for another kill. Four, two, and four in the mid lane. Four, one, and two in the top, and two, zero, one. These score lines for 100 Thieves just tell you a full participation by the entire team in something they're getting their hands on. And that is just hard to stop in itself. It requires the defense to be together as well. A 16,000 gold lead, one of the biggest we've really ever seen here in favor of 100 Thieves means they now need to close the game. That's the next step. Anything else that happens is an error for them. Yeah, at this point, double inhibitors down, bearing up for another minute, plenty of dive available for your team. Oh, yeah. If uh, the game is not over, in the next couple of minutes, like you said, probably something went off the rails. <laughs> <laughs> the drill goes forward. They try to spark a fight. Oh, is he stunned up before he can use the ultimate spell? I mean, it comes down, so Lambs Respite comes out. Shady's very low now, but they're all trying to stay alive in the Heavenly Respite. A triple kill for Linsanity. The fourth one comes up for Brandini, and the last one, Linsanity as well. And a four for one, the ace comes through for 100 Thieves. 17 to three at the end of the game and over 16,000 gold in the lead. 100 Thieves takes down TSM Academy. Brandini with the accidental pentakill steal, took the yeah. fourth kill away from him, not knowing that he would get the fifth. Uh, and a really good game by Linsanity. Nice to see him grab all those kills for himself at the end to yeah. pad that KDA, because he did a lot of the early lifting. He just didn't necessarily have the kills to support it. If it's got to feel so good to actually come out and kind of play your own style like that. Put something fresh on the Rift that Academy hasn't been seeing too much of and be able to dominate in such a way that the other team can't even step to you with the full five. Yeah, and it was such a, a good idea and execution together with how they wanted to attack the early game. Levi and him comboing together to hold down Mike Young's own camps while making yep. sure he can't get that many bounties for his kindred. And then out of nowhere, you know, with this strategy, you're level six before anyone else is. You can start making plays earlier on. And they just kept using this mid-jungle pressure to make everything happen for them. I think the level discrepancy became a bit disgusting in that <laughs> yeah. game for Talon and Mid, and we saw it having a huge effect. Here, a replay at 11 minutes in. 100 Thieves able to secure a three for zero in the top lane match. And this is the, the, the play that really broke the game open for them. Pie Cake Lord just a little bit too far ahead in lane. Levi finally makes his visit up there and they get a pretty easy kill. Levi getting a little trigger happy with the ultimate. But then from here, big misplay by Mike Young. Sees this coming in, tries to run straight down, not able to do so. The Galio ult comes in, but Mike Young doesn't get his ultimate off. This is all happening away from the turret. It yeah. starts kind of refocusing down onto them, but at this point, uh, they hadn't taken that much damage. Probably were going to die anyways, as it was a four for two, no matter what. Might not have been able to get anything out of it either way. And that was what really blew the game open for 100 Thieves. Absolutely. And then we saw all game, Linsanity stealing Raptors, making sure Mike Young had to go to different places. And this made Linsanity huge. And as we said, very deserving off his quadra kill at the end of the game. The replay here just shows how big he was. The blades go out and the kills come in. Yeah, it was funny seeing the attempted use of the ultimate. Nice timing to get it off. The black shield protected him from the CC chain so he could drop the lamb's respite. But it's just too little too late at this point as they're able to just stay dogpiled on top of him and all that AOE damage coming in from the Vladimir, the Talon, uh, the Gnar as well. Just everyone throwing out their abilities. And when you have a 16K gold lead, dog piles tend to work just fine. Dogs are awesome all the time, but 16,000 dogs, fantastic. Even though that wasn't anything. Are you telling me it's a said. dollar a dog? <laughs> that's, a that's a deal. That's, I, I'll take that deal. So we've got one more game coming up after the break. Golden Guardians takes on Echo Fox Academy. And to correct, there's two more games because there's one after Echo Fox and Golden Guardians. Meet us here after the break.
Mike Young finding himself in a bad spot. Lambs was fight to go down and save himself. No, it does not. And now it's gonna be a Blaze Olive in the frying pan, a 4v1 situation. They say you want the fight, we'll take the fight to you. Stunned up and up, the Lambs or Spike cannot even come down. It was not the first time that's happened to Mike Young. These fights are happening so fast. A Blaze Olive locking down three on the backside of the pit as Shady gets the Lambs or Spike to help him, but he does go down. Shady's very low now, but they're all trying to stay alive in the heavenly respite. A triple kill for Linsanity. The fourth one comes up for Brandini.